Hey everybody, I am Steve and welcome back to Retro Tech. Now currently I am in my shop and I'm working on a new restoration project for a Sony PVM, which you can see right over here. However, over the last two days, I've really had a topic that's been really pushed towards me and really towards any creator on YouTube. And that is COPPA or C-O-P-P-A, which is the Child Online Privacy Protection Act. Uh, it's about a 20-year-old law that was enforced in 2000. And, um, of course, if you want to know more of that, you can really just search COPPA, and you'll find out a lot more uh, about the details of the law. However, there's been a big push by the FTC, YouTube, Google, and other large conglomerates to start to change how COPPA a is enacted or enforced and especially push a lot of that blame onto smaller creators on youtube such as myself and then even larger creators on the channel as well so today i want to talk specifically about how this whole child protection act can affect my channel and as well as other retro gaming channels and uh, what we can really do to protect ourselves and then how you guys can help as the audience. So first off, I want to talk a little bit about how this is going to kind of affect our channels. Now, first off, the point behind this law, it's not like the other copyright changes and algorithm changes that people have been complaining about on YouTube over the last year. This is completely different. This is a law that's targeting video creators now. Well, starting in January of 2020, they're going to start targeting video creators who create content and then monetize their content, so allow ads on their content, uh, they will target them and see if any of those creators actually have elements to their videos that could be considered targeting towards children. And that's the children ages of 13 and under. So you can imagine how much trouble people in the retro gaming community could be in if they decide to target our community. And uh, the reason being is, I guess, I mean, just imagine a simple, here's a simple uh, real life example of what could happen. Now, let's say you just make uh, either speed runs or maybe videos on let's play certain games. These could be, even be really old retro games. You just want to talk about them and hang out and uh, play through the game. Well, let's say that down the road sometime in 2020, Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, one of these other major companies decides that they want to uh, re-release that game or they buy the rights to it. Someone else re-releases the game that you've done a playthrough for and you, you could have made the video years ago. Well, if that video all of a sudden becomes trending and then kids like the game and want to go watch your video on the game, well, if you have advertisements on that video, all of a sudden you are have put yourself in the crosshairs of the FTC and possibly getting fined over $42,000 for just that one video. And that's a real life situation that could easily happen to anybody who creates that kind of content. Now, as for me, I do have mostly repair content and restoration content, tech talks, things like that that are going to be obviously geared toward the adult and adult audience. However, I do have many videos that might have a little excerpt in them that shows an example of video games being played. Or I might talk about a certain old retro video game in my videos about repairs. And so that leaves me open to being a target myself. So how can I... Uh, protect myself. First, I want to show you how you can protect uh, or help out in this situation. If you currently like YouTube and the way it's going, well, then you probably should uh, check out some of the links I've put in my description of my video. There's a place where you can go sign a petition and say you're against this change and the possibility of these fines being passed on down to smaller YouTube creators. And there's also another place where you can uh, contact the FTC. So I'm going to put those two links down below. So if you want to help, you can go right away and do that because they're going to make an ultimate decision on this uh, within the first week of December in 2019. And we have until that date, I believe it's December 6th or 9th, probably, I think it's the 9th, but I'm not positive. Uh, but we have until that date to uh, get them to possibly change their actions and not go through with this on January 1st. So if public outcry is high enough, then the possibility is there that they could change their minds and not target individual creators. However, as far as a creator like myself, 
I'm going to have to go through back now before January 1st and screen every video I've ever created and make sure there's not some kind of commercial on there if it has anything to do with a possibility of being a child-friendly video. So that's what I'm suggesting to most of the creators in the short term until this gets figured out. We may have to go back and just unmonetize or demonetize a lot of these videos in question. That way they can't target us by saying we're making money because that's what this is all about, the advertisements that are being pushed and sold to children. It's not about the content of the video so much as they're going to, and it's, and unfortunately, if you go read the law, it's completely wide open. So there's an opportunity for them to interpret the uh, ruling as any way they can. And unfortunately, they're going to put a lot of that burden of proof on our shoulders as creators. So specifically for creators, my biggest suggestion would be for the first you know, couple months to feel this out would be to go back and make sure January 1st that you have any video that's in question that might be just about video games specifically or younger video games. I mean, think about the characters, Mario, Sonic. These are timeless characters that have new modern things happening to them as far as videos and movies even. And so they're going to be watching this, uh, these kind of con this kind of content on YouTube in 2020, I feel, if we don't get any changes done. And then uh, another thing to consider would be consider what Nintendo has done uh, to ROM sites over the last year and a half. They've really targeted ROM sites, Nintendo specifically, and anyone who has their intellectual data uh, and is using it to make any kind of a profit or anything. They've taken their legal team and really targeted those uh you know, creators of those web pages, which I don't think is really a bad thing. But if Nintendo is that aggressive towards this community, being retro gaming and specifically, what would make you think that if they're not making any money off of us or any other retro gaming channel, uh, making content involving their characters or their games, they would be glad to go then and push for uh, legal, uh, you know, push their legal team to uh, target lobbyists in Washington to speak with the FTC and have their agents specifically, again, target channels that are creating this. And look, it's no lie, uh, monetization is a nice feedback or a nice thing for creators on YouTube. But personally, my channel really, it's its taken over a year and a half to start making $75 uh, pre-tax number, $75 in income a month. So uh, that's not a whole lot of money. At the end of the year, you're talking about $1,000 that, you know, is not really worth the risk if you're going to get hit with a $42,000 fine for one video. And that could be per video. So again, I have to go back now and check all my videos and do all that. But I just wanted to bring this uh, uh, topic into the attention of my audience. And that's the reason I'm making this video today. So again, if you want to help out before December 9th, go and follow the links do what you can, sign the petition, send a letter to the FTC, and be civil, and they will take your and put you into a category and say, you know, you're against this and one of the millions of people that is against this. Now, let me reiterate, this is not going to affect people that are outside of the United States because this is uh, the FTC only controls the United States. So if you make content outside of the United States, then you've really just got to worry about what your local uh, areas of government have and what kind of laws there are to protect kids in, uh, in those districts. So again, I just want to say, I don't think that COPPA is a very bad thing initially. I mean, it was started in uh, the late 90s as a tool to protect children from pretty much online predators in the early years of the internet. However, the definitions of the law are so broad that there's a real opportunity for uh, the government to just go in and kind of clean house and really change things up in YouTube. And they might just be doing that to possibly move things out of the way for their preferred you know, mainstream, mainline. This is an easy way to censor a lot of those alternative uh, viewpoints that are on YouTube and that do so well on YouTube. So thanks again for listening to my two cents on this. I appreciate anybody who enjoys these videos, but just note that if the FC, FTC goes through with this change and nothing happens, that you could see even more changes coming from me and other creators you really enjoy watching here on YouTube. And it, we might not necessarily be the initial targets on what it looks like from uh, a larger perspective. However, we're leaving things open to government officials who for whatever reason they want can decide to go and uh, make us a target individually or as a whole entire group or genre. Again, I'm Steve. 
Thanks again for taking this minute to watch Retro Tech. And please, if you have any comments, suggestions, or any experiences you want to talk about, share them below in the comment section. And I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.